Hi and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about the binomial distribution. The binomial distribution is a specific kind of discrete random variable that satisfies these four conditions you can see. You need to know these four conditions, so let's talk about them. If a random variable has only two outcomes, uh, sometimes we call it success and failure. If our, each outcome is independent of the other, the probability stays the same for each trial and there is a fixed number of trials, then we can say this random variable has a binomial distribution and that, that helps us simplify things, uh, makes life a little bit easier when we're analyzing a situation that looks like this. So this is a very useful thing for statisticians to, to basically model the kind of data and, and kind of put it in a pigeonhole and say, yes, I know that that's going to look like the binomial distribution in this case. Now, first thing uh, with the, the two outcomes, you might think rolling a dice couldn't be binomial distribution because there's six different outcomes. But in a lot of cases, we can force it to be binomial by just making a slight adjustment and saying uh, the random variable is whether we get a six or we don't get a six. So there, there could be two outcomes if we think of it like that. So getting a six or not getting a six. Now there's two outcomes with that random variable. Okay, so let's look at this example uh, to derive the formula for the binomial, dis binomial distribution which you are given on your formula sheet. Imagine there are three astronauts on a voyage to the moon. We know, or NASA knows, that 20% of astronauts get space sick at some stage. And I want to know what's the probability that exactly two astronauts will get, get sick. That might be a really important problem because once you're missing two astronauts, you might not be able to fly the spacecraft properly. So let's, let's look at this. Is this a binomial random variable? Well, for each astronaut, there are two outcomes, sick or not sick. Space sickness is not infectious, so each astronaut getting sick is independent of the other. We know that overall the probability is 0.2. There's a 20% chance, so 0.2 is the probability that any given astronaut will get sick. And there's three astronauts, so three trials. So this is looking good for a binomial distribution. So the probability is two astronauts getting sick and one being okay is 0.2 squared times 0.8, which is wrong. That would be the probability of the first two astronauts getting sick and the third not. But we've also got to think about, well, it could be the first and third astronauts who get sick and the second one's okay. In fact, there's three ways we could look at it. So our answer is really three times the number above there, or three choose two times our number that we got before. Okay? And this lends itself to looking at the actual formula here. So in general, let's say we had 10 astronauts and we wanted to work out what's the probability that four of them would get sick. Okay, N is the total number of trials here. R is the prob the one that the particular outcome we're looking for. So in four. We wanted to know the probability that four astronauts got sick. We'd replace R with four. P to the power of R, so we'd have 0.2 to the power of four, so that's four of the astronauts getting sick. One minus P, so that would be 0.8 to the power of N minus R. This is how many astronauts are okay. So 10 minus four would be six, so 0.8 to the power of six. That's the formula for the binomial distribution that you need to know and understand. The parameters of the binomial distribution are n and p, the number of trials and the probability of a success at each trial. We call those the parameters. They're the things that define each different random variable. And here's uh, what we write. x, this little squiggly line here says is distributed or has the distribution b for binomial, n and p. And there's the formula that you're given on the formula sheet. First example here. We've got three blue balls and two white balls in a bag. One is drawn, then replaced, and another ball is drawn. That's important there that we realize that it is replaced. We'd run into problems if it wasn't. Okay, so is X a binomial random variable? Well, there's two outcomes, blue or white. We could say blue or not blue, because our random variable here is about the number of blue balls drawn. The probability is always constant because we're replacing the ball each time. So the probability of getting a, a blue ball on any draw is 3 out of 5. Each draw is independent of the other. Um, one draw doesn't influence the outcome of another one. And there's a fixed number of trials here. Two draws. We're doing drawing out two balls. 
Okay, so the parameters of x, n is 2, p is 3 fifths or 0.6. So we could write this, x has the binomial distribution n equals 2, p equals 0.6. Probability x equals 1 using the formula is 0.48. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 1, you could say that's the chance of getting 1 or 2 blue balls, or it's just as easy to say 1 minus the probability that you get no blue balls. That's an important one, especially if we had more balls, more draws here, uh, you know, like 10 or 12 draws, and I said, what's the chance of getting at least 1? It's much easier to say 1 minus the chance of getting no blue balls here. So in the formula, n is 2, the little r is 0, p is 0 0.6, and I've just put that into the formula. And that gives me 0 0.84. Note that we could have drawn a tree diagram here uh, and got the probabilities from the tree diagram. That That would be really easy, but things could get complicated if we do four draws uh, and say we wanted to know the probability of getting exactly two. The tr what if we had ten balls, ten draws? Uh, you can see the tree diagram would be a nightmare. You'd have uh, two branches of these two, that would be three draws, there'd be eight branches. After four draws, there'd be 16 branches. After ten draws, there'd be 1,024 branches, and you'd, it would be get very complicated. This formula here makes these problems a lot easier to deal with rather than drawing tree diagrams. Second example, we know 42% of people own a pet. We're going to look at uh, 10 people and the x is the random variable for the number of people who own a pet from that sample of 12. Right, four conditions. There's only two outcomes. You either own a pet or don't own a pet. The probability is constant. Pet ownership is independent and there are a fixed number of trials, 12 people. If the question in the exam asks you this, make sure you relate it to the situation that you're dealing with, not just saying there's only two outcomes. Also put in there that specifically how that relates to this situation. Find the probability that seven people from the sample own a pet. Okay, so X is uh, binomial distribution, N is 12, P is 0.42. I'll put the numbers in the formula. It gives me 0.120. C, the probability that no more than 10, no more than 10. So that includes 10. So that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Wow. If you want to use the formula that many times, you'll be there all day. There's a much easier way. That is 1 minus the probability, probability that 11 or 12 people own a pet. And now we only have to use the formula two times here it's still very, very, very good chance that you can have no more than 10 people owning a pet, given that any one person has a 42% chance of owning a pet. So 0.999. And the last one, more than two people. More than two, once again, you could say 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Much easier to say 1 minus less than or equal to 2. So 1 minus 0, 1 or 2. So there you have to use the formula three times. And that's reasonable. They may ask you to do that in the exam. There's the working. Carefully putting all the numbers in. 0.936 is the answer.